Welcome back. Model initialization. An instance of the RN model is created with the specified parameters and moved to the GPU if available. Loss function. We are using cross entropy loss because it is suitable for classification tasks like predicting the next word in a sequence. We are using Adam Optimizer to optimize the model. Adam Optimizer is widely used for its efficiency and effectiveness. Here we have written a function called batchify. This function converts the sequence data into batches for the training. In the training loop, the model is trained for a specified number of epochs. In each epoch, the model processes each batch of input data. The hidden state is initialized for each batch. The optimizer's gradients are reset. The model's forward pass is executed on the inputs and the initial hidden state for the batch. The output is reshaped, focusing on the last output of each sequence. The loss is computed using the flattened output and target. Backpropagation is performed and the optimizer updates the model parameters. Several quick remarks here. In a batch, each sequence is processed independently and parallelly by the RNN. An initialization is sent for each sequence's first word or time step. This is why the size of the initialization is equal to the number of sequences in the batch. The first word of a sequence gets a typical zero initialization of hidden state with input. From the second word, each word or time step in a sequence receives the hidden state from the previous time step as part of its input. Passing the hidden state from one word to the next allows the RNN to maintain a form of memory. Note that the batches are independent of each other. The sequences are independent of each other too. You could play with your batchify function to ensure you have some overlapping sequences between two consecutive sequences. For this practice, our batchify function just created pieces of sequences. OK, we have our trained model. The model is suitable to predict the next word. We can repeatedly call it to generate text. First, let us see how we can generate one word. Model.eval puts the model in evaluation mode suitable for inference. Start sec is your given starting text, some exporters said. I actually copied it from a document of the data. I expect that the next word will be that, because after the word said, it is common to see the word that. Also, the sequence, some exporters said, is directly coming from one of the documents that was used for training. So the model should be able to infer the next word as that, of course, if it had reasonable training. This text is split into words, and each word is converted to its corresponding integer using the word underscore to underscore int dictionary. This dictionary is the mapping of words to integers that we created earlier, which the model understands. The resulting list of integers, input CQ, represents the starting sequence in a numerical format. Input tensor is created by converting input sec into a PyTorch tensor, which is the format required for processing by the model. This tensor is then sent to the appropriate device, CPU or GPU. This line initializes the hidden state for the RNN. The 1 indicates that the batch size is 1, as you generate a word for a single sequence. The model takes input tensor and hidden as inputs and returns the output logits for the next word in the sequence. The output logits are processed to obtain probabilities. Torch.topk retrieves the index of the most probable next word since k equals 1. Next word is then looked up using the int underscore to underscore word dictionary, converting the predicted integer back into a readable word. Printing the next word, we find that the model predicted the word that. So the prediction is correct. That is excellent. But predicting one word is not sufficient. Given the input sequence, we want to use the model to predict many words to generate text. Now we will see how we can repeatedly call the model to generate longer text. How we call the model to generate text will tremendously impact the quality of the text. Natural language is complex. Just greedily predicting the next word might not be sufficient for generating meaningful texts. In this code, I have provided three mechanisms to generate text using the model. 
Given an initial text as input, the first generate underscore text function gets the predicted next word from the model, then adds that predicted word in the input, iterates as many times it is asked to iterate. After generating the words, it stops whether the sentence is complete or not. The second function, generate underscore text underscore temperature, adjusts the probability distribution used for sampling the next word. A temperature parameter modifies the distribution, making the model's predictions more or less random. The temperature parameter is used to scale the logits before applying softmax. A higher temperature that is greater than 1 produces more randomness, while a lower temperature, smaller than 1, makes the model more confident but potentially more repetitive. I provide a third function using beam search. Beam search is a bit more complex and involves keeping track of multiple sequences or beams at each step and expanding each of them before selecting the best candidates. Depending on your model's output structure, you may need to adjust these implementations, particularly for the beam search. Beam search is a popular technique used in many chatbot models and other natural language processing applications, especially those that involve sequence generation like machine translation, text summarization, and conversational agents. Its popularity stems from its effectiveness in finding a more optimal sequence compared to more straightforward methods. Let us do some tests with all three. I copy the sequence of words the Business Economics Department from a document of the data. Given that we only used 50 documents in the training, a reasonable model should be able to generate the text that appears in the original document after the text, the Business Economics Department. Let us see. I use the simple function first by calling the generate underscore text function. Here is what it returns. The Business Economics Department said it named no sources. A Nippon Steel spokesman said it had been able to cut its losses because in the US. This reads strange. Also, the text is not capturing the original text. Now I activate the temperature-based approach. With the same input sequence using the same model, the generated text is. The Business Economics Department said it will remain 12. 44 is unfavorable to rise sharply to between 450 and... This sounds funny too, and the generated text does not match the context that appeared in the original document. Now, I am using the beam search function using the same initial text and the same model. Here is the generated text. The business economics department said, it said January-March imports rose to 65.1 billion baht from 58.7 billion. Thailand's improved business climate this year resulted in a 27 PCT increase in imports of raw materials and semi-finished products. The country's oil import bill, however, the text is exactly what is written in the document. Note here that the model did not remember any text directly. The other two functions had the same model, but they could not generate the original text. The beam search function, even though it used the same RNN model, provided more realistic results. The lesson here is that model performance not only depends on the model, but also on how the downstream application is implemented to leverage the model's power. Modern chat models are trained on much more sophisticated models than RNNs. The downstream chat applications contain more sophisticated systems to best leverage the trained model, the code is linked in the description section below. Note that these videos are for educational purposes. Also, RNN is not really the best choice for building a chat model in this era of Transformers, Llama and commercially available GPT models.